Good afternoon, Coach. How are you today? Doing okay. How are you? Uh, I want to first uh, ask you, Coach, about the Kincaid catch. Uh, what went into not challenging that particular play? Yeah, I didn't have a look at it. I, I was on the other side of the sideline, so you can't get a look at it. He was on the other side. They had no replay um, in the uh, – on the video screen naturally when they're playing at home. So, you know, I was going off of the information I got from, from our people in the booth and I, I trust those guys and um, they felt like they had a pretty clear bobble and touching of the ground with the ball. After watching the film, has your opinion changed? No. Okay. I wanted to ask you too about the play of the rookie uh, Dwayne Carter. The last two games, I, I felt he has really made some plays and strides in the defense. He has, and um, you know he's given us some energy. He's, you know, at first, that first uh, diagnose of the screen in the uh, first series of the game was big for us, getting him off to a good start. And I thought he did some really good things out there. And just like you said, every week he's he uh, he continues to grow and develop for us. And my last thing for you, coach, is uh, health wise, how did you come out of the game? Uh, you know, we'll see. I'm still getting. We got back late, right? So I'm still getting information. We'll see how it goes. Um, uh, as we move forward here. All right. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Yeah, hey, John. Uh, I know it's early in the week. Are any update or any forecasting for Taryn Johnson or Khalil for this upcoming game? Yeah, so Taryn, um, we'll see how he does this week. Um, Derek's pulling my card for me here. Thanks, Derek. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he's – I think he's improving a little bit. We'll have to see how the week goes. We'll take it one day at a time. And then who was the other one you mentioned? Khalil Shakir and also Johnson. Yeah, Khalil, um, uh, you know, similar. similar. He, I think he's improving. We'll just have to see how this week looks. And then Austin Johnson uh, is improving as well. Um, we'll take it one day. We just got a bunch of these guys in this kind of limbo position right now, Alex, it seems like. That's that's. What, what I do have from our trainers on the guys that were not able to, to play this past week, uh, the new injuries and things that is, I don't have a lot of information on that yet. In just in situ rap as well, I imagine. You're kind of breaking up. I heard T rap is so T raps in concussion protocol still. So that's, that's where he is. All right. And finally, Since we lost uh, Alex Brasky, Warrell, you're up. Yep. Um, Sean, John Warrell. Um, just, um, I guess, it, and, and I guess, was were there any were there any after effects with Josh, given that he got bopped in the head, even though he said, I mean, he acknowledged it was a chest injury and, and, and an ankle thing? Oh, Josh was cleared, um, and he went back in the game. That's, that's what I know from uh, our medical staff on the sideline there. Um, good. And the production, I mean, we, we, a lot of us, well, everybody was celebrating the everybody eats motto, um, for the first three games. Do you worry about the level of play at your receiver position, given how inefficient the passing attack has been over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I can understand uh, why you're asking that question, John, and the concern, uh, there's no doubt there is concern. Um, that said, I'm confident in those guys, confident that we can put them in positions to, uh, to use their, their talents and, and their potential. And, um, you know, we'll, we're going to work hard at that as we continue to move forward. And we do need to improve in that area as a whole here. So we've got to, we've got to do a better job at, you know, winning first downs and staying out of third and long. You guys know that. So it's, it's not, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Hey, Sean, um, building off that a little bit at your wide receiver spot, Max Holland, 17 targets, six catches. He's played, I think, the second most snaps. Um, what have you seen from him? Has he given you enough? Obviously, he had that big block in the game on the Keon touchdown. Yeah. But in the passing game, he's been targeted quite a bit. What, what's your assessment on his contributions in that area? No, I mean, Max is a good football player, right? And and what's important for us is, you know, he's he plays a dual role for us, uh, offense and special teams. And um, and so, you know, we have to manage that for him and making sure that we handle that appropriately each game. 
Um, so we get the best version of back, back number one. And then number two is, uh, you know, we have other um, players with ability out there as well. Um, I don't want to, you know, need, don't need to go into detail on who those guys are, but um, it doesn't all need to fall on Mac and nor does it all need to fall on just one person. So um, I thought we were off to a good start, you know, I'll call it the first three games, last two games, not so much. So we've got to go back to the drawing board on that and, 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 uh, and reassess that. Um, so much was discussed in the off season after bringing in Curtis um, about his potential role, what he can do, um, the versatility to his game. It just, it hasn't seemed to click. What, how have you diagnosed that and why that might be? Yeah. Um, again, understand why you're asking that, Matt. And um, it is, it is a concern of, of ours and that's something we have to, to look at. And, and um, Curtis is a good football player. We know what he can do with the ball in his hands, um, whether he's running it or catching it. So it is a, it is something that we need to look at to make sure that we are uh, maximizing his potential. And I, I guess this is kind of redundant at this point, but like Dawson to a, a, a greater extent, Dawson Knox, you, know, you guys signed him to that big contract extension a couple of years ago, um, five games. I think it's five <laughs> targets and three catches. Is that a big concern for a guy that, you know, has been with Josh the longest of the, of the entire group of pass catchers that he's not been able to kind of get worked into the plan. And yeah. how much of that falls on Joe Brady's lap? Well, ultimately it's on my lap and, um, you know, we've got to do a better job there. And, uh, again, that's what today, when you, when you kind of peel it back and say, Hey, what are we doing? Are we doing enough? Are we doing the right things for our offense? Are we, again, you go back and say, Hey, why haven't we moved the ball well enough on first down? And then again, on third down, there are too many third and long. So, um, you know, we've got some work to do, uh, Matt, this week on figuring some of that, some of that out for sure. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Coach Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Welcome back. Hi, Mookie. Hey, man. A hey, great, great, great bar game in the second half. But we all know, you know, coaching, you know, the experience is always the best teacher, right? And, hey, man, you're a player's coach. You're, you're a coach's coach. You don't micromanage your staff at all. But we all know at the end it falls on you. And, you know, you're completely accountable with that. And yesterday you're clearly in the headset on video saying, hey, we only need 10 yards. So, you know, what is needed from a communication standpoint between head coach, OC, and quarterback going forward? Uh, as it relates to the last series, I mean, listen, um, you know, uh, again, that's on me. I wish I had that back. And, you know, we'll learn from that. I'm confident in that. Uh, we'll talk more today about our process and and the uh, communication that leads us to that moving forward. And I'm confident in myself, confident in Joe. And uh, and uh, you know, again, that's that's a situation that uh, that we'll learn from. Absolutely, absolutely, Coach. And um, Brees Hall, Braylon Allen, you know, they account for just about 25 percent of Rogers' completions at this point. On third down yesterday, you know, the Texans used a lot of their running backs out of backfield quite a bit on third down. How important is it to get those things going, uh, corrected versus a good, uh, tough Jets team? Good Jets team. Um, you know, we're looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. And, and I really haven't gotten to the film yet, as I mentioned, just trying to um, address some of the other areas that we got going on now. So uh, we'll work on that. That's a, that's a challenge for, for later today as, as we move forward here. Absolutely, Coach. Appreciate your time. Have a good yeah. week. Sure, you too, Mookie. Sorry about that, Sean. My internet failed me uh, the, the first time. But what did you see from the off offensive line uh, this week? It seems like they started the season pretty red hot. Last two weeks, maybe more of a struggle. Uh, you know, I mean, I thought we moved the ball uh, through the running game well at times and then maybe some, not as well at times. But that's that's kind of the nature of the run game once in a while. Right. You're going to have some zero runs, zero game runs. Um, so I think they're doing a good job. The penalties are getting in the way a little bit. Uh, so we've got to try and get rid of those. Uh, that'll help us. Um, I think James had a big run when, when Spence got called there. And, and so. Uh, I think that was first quarter there, uh, first series or two. So, you know, overall, I um, thought they did some good things in the game. You know, just overall, we need to c 
continue to add detail, O-line, O-line, uh, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers, and, 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 you know, just, just in some ways, um, or in a lot of ways do simple better. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but uh, we're, we're, we're not detailed enough right now. And, uh, and that's something that gets in the way of execution. How did you think Cole Bishop fared in his first start? Uh, particularly what happened on that play, the long touchdown and Nico Collins, was there a breakdown there with him or? Yeah. Yeah, there was, I mean, it was, it's, it was communication and, and we got some young guys out there playing. And and so it's a shame with Cole because he was hurt most of the training camp and wasn't able to get out there and get through some of these things and, and work with Rasul on that, in that case, and Rasul is the corner. And uh, that's one I know uh, down the road Cole will grow from and we'll be in a better position uh, you know, so just overall, I thought he did some good things in the game. It looked like, which is encouraging as the game went on, Alex, he got better and better and, and got more and more comfortable in what he was seeing. And, um, mm-hmm. early on, maybe the game was running a little hot for him, you know, playing a little bit too fast for him there. And, um, you know, just something that, um, I know that he wants back. And finally, Terrell Bernard really made a big impact to stop on fourth and one in the interception, how big was it to to have him back out there? Not only his presence, but the impact that he made. Yeah, he's a big big time leader for us. Having his voice back out there is was important for us. I thought he did a really good job on the sideline of, hey, what's going on? How can we fix it? And then when the defense started getting into a rhythm there of hey, spreading that energy around the sideline to the offense, and um, so we need we need more of that. Uh, but it was great to have him back out there. All right, thanks for your time. Sure. So, good afternoon, uh, Coach George Radney, Challenger Community News. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Great. A uh, couple questions for you here. Uh, Trubisky, I was wondering with, when the uh, defense made the uh, – Dwayne Smoot and the defense made the great play in the uh, – enforced the turnover. Uh, when Trubisky came in at the 15-yard – at the uh, Texans' 15-yard line, I'm just wondering why didn't he stay in to, uh, to play? Because I'm looking here at the stats. Josh was 9 of 30. Uh, with a 56% uh, quarterback rating, which I'm sure you already know. But, hey, he was had Joshua having a bad day. Wouldn't have been uh, – I was just wondering what was the thought process or not just letting him run the series and see what he could do from the uh, opponent's 15-yard line late in the game, getting a chance to pull – maybe pull this game out. You want me You want me to pull Josh? Is that what you're saying? No, well, he has had, had uh, just recently bounced off the turf, and it, yeah. he was in the blue tent and everything. So it looked like he, he definitely – Probably wasn't a hundred percent, so I'm just questioning with why uh, Trubisky didn't get an opportunity to, uh, to to run that series. Yeah, uh, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, again, that's I'm. You know, I was told he was clear. Josh was, and and we moved forward from there. So um, you know, that's that's it at that point. All right, I missed the earlier part. Of the, is, is was there any? Is he is Josh in con- concussion protocol or any being seen or anything of that nature currently? No. No? Okay. Uh, the question on the uh, defensive side of the ball with um, the play of uh, Dwayne Carter and Dwayne Smoot, what, how would you uh, evaluate their uh, their play yesterday? Yeah, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, Dwayne Carter, um, I don't think you were on yet, it sounds like, uh, mm-hmm. George. So Dwayne Carter, I think, continues to develop as a rookie, made some really nice plays yesterday. I thought he played physical at the point of attack, played with good energy. Um He's developing. Um, let's see who did you, and then Smoot. I thought Smoot. Yes, Smoot showed up as well from a physicality standpoint and uh, made the big play, the sack fumble down there that um, we had a good opportunity to to, to get points with there uh, seven. I was hoping, um, but uh, I thought he did some good things in the run game as well and early downs and just the physicality overall and how fast and physical he was playing. I thought showed up. Yes, because it looked like the adjustments were definitely made, and it was able to contain Stroud in that in that offense uh, for the, for most of that uh, most of that second half. And, yeah, I felt uh, I felt like I felt like the adjustments were made, and and then the you know we we gave up the big pass play earlier that was alluded to earlier here on the interview, and and um, you know outside of that, we had a, the first drive we had a third down where we busted it busted a with the running back in the flat, um, and then. 
other than that, I thought the guys really battled and had a lot of young guys out there playing and, and uh, having seen their first action as well in the NFL in, in terms of a regular season game. Um, so a lot we can take from that game defensively and, and build on. Yeah, and even the rookie, the, the guy you just brought in this week, that's rare you bring a guy in and put right in there, that low guy. He looked like he uh, was acclimated enough and, 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 and did well for himself as, uh, also. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about you got DQ out there and uh, you got those three rookies that were playing alongside of him with with uh, with DC and then and then Zion Logue and and Branson Dean. That was, um, you know, I tip my cap to those guys. They they were out there competing and and uh, giving it all they got. Absolutely. All right, Coach. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, George. Hey, Sean. Uh, AJ Feldman here in Rochester. Um, on the final offensive possession. Can you kind of talk about maybe the, the coaching philosophy and balance between going with, you know, Josh Allen, the passing game, which is, you know, typically, you know, very successful for you, but didn't really have the strongest of games as opposed to, you know, going with the ground game, you know, the balance between what's working that game right now. And, you know, the long term, obviously, you know, success of Josh in the passing game. Are you talking about the last series? Yeah, the last year I was on offense. Yeah. No, I mean, this, it's on me. Um, like I said, it's, um, you know, I, I love the ball in Josh's hands. That being said, um, you know, in hindsight said, hey, maybe we run it on the first play and, and see where we're at from there and just kind of survey the landscape. You know, they have, it's a tough situation, right? It's, it's easy to say just run it three times and potentially end up potentially punting the ball back and maybe we're in the same situation and we don't ever put the ball in our best player's hands. Um, either way, um, ideally we would have gotten a first down and, and been out of it, right. And move the chains. The thing on the other end is they have a really good kicker. And so you have to be aware of that as well. He's hit from 60 plus. Um, and I think he's attempted maybe from 63, uh, approximately. So, um, either way it didn't work out and, and I take full responsibility for it. And then you talk about the uh, the communication process. Um, you know, the punt happens, the offense goes on the field there. What is kind of typically the communication you try and have there with your offensive coordinator and play caller? Are you, you know, instructing him run versus pass? You know, um, what what types of passes? What's kind of, you know, the the communication that you like to have there in that situation? Yeah, I don't, you know, getting into it. I mean, we could sit here and discuss that for another hour, really. Um, but the process... Um, is usually the process. I think we have good communication. Uh, Joe does a really good job. Uh, the guys in the booth do a really good job. So, um, listen, if the ball rolled into the end zone, it would have been a lot easier for to have the ball at the 20, right? And uh, But it didn't. And so we have to get ourselves out of there and uh, and make sure we do a good, good job there with uh, trying to run the clock and, and move the chains ideally in that situation because uh, you never know where the punt return is going to end up. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I got to do a better job with that. All right. Thanks for your time, Sean. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Coach, on offense, you mentioned honing in on those fine details. What does that look like this week? Yeah, I mean, I, I really feel, Maddie, that it's making sure we're, we're all on the same page. Every position group is on the same page with the intent of the play, with the detail that's necessary um, to allow us or to help us execute one play, which takes every player um, on the offensive side of the ball to execute right a, a play because sometimes one person breaks down and the, and the whole play breaks down. So, um, you know, it's that's why I think football is such a team game like that. It's so important everyone is on the same page. And um, I know we're capable of that. I've seen us do that prior to especially the last two games, but I'm, I'm confident we'll get it back here. And then on defense, just over the last two weeks, what do you want to see out of this team being a better third down defense? Yeah, you know, that's something we have to look at. Um, again, there's a little bit of some mental bust going on, um, some just, you know, being out executed. And so there, at the end of the day, I think what you saw when we had success yesterday, Matty, was the rush and the coverage working together. Um, and so we need to make sure that that is happening uh, on a more consistent basis. Thanks, Coach. Sure.